Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be covering key things that you need to know about a medication called sildenafil, also known more commonly by its brand name, Viagra. In this brief but information-packed video, we're going to be covering what sildenafil is, who can and can't take it, how and where to get sildenafil if you live in the UK, how to take it, common doses of sildenafil specifically for erectile dysfunction, and what to do if you forget to take it or take too much. Towards the end of the video, we're going to be covering some important points on some side effects, both common side effects as well as rarer but important side effects. As ever, if you do enjoy the video and you learn something new, please give the video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel for new medical education videos which I produce every week. It'd be great to have you along as part of this growing community. So let's start off the video with covering what sildenafil is. So sildenafil is a medication that's used traditionally to treat erectile problems, specifically erectile dysfunction. And it can also sometimes be used to treat a condition called pulmonary hypertension. This is essentially where there's high blood pressure in the blood vessels that supply the lungs. But for the purpose of this video, let's focus on erectile dysfunction. So sildenafil belongs to a group of medications called phosphodiesterase 5 or PD5 inhibitors. And it works by temporarily increasing blood flow to the penis when you get sexually aroused. For a full video on erectile dysfunction, please do check out the other video on this channel where I've covered key things that you need to know about erectile dysfunction. So now that we know a little bit more about sildenafil, well, who can and who can't take it? Well, the good news is that most men aged 18 and over can take sildenafil for erectile dysfunction. However, it's not suitable for certain people. To make sure that it's safe for you, you should be speaking to your doctor or pharmacist before taking sildenafil if you've ever had an allergic reaction to sildenafil or any other medication in the similar class. You should also discuss it with your doctor if you're taking medicines called nitrates for chest pain or angina. If you've ever had a serious heart or liver problem, or if you've recently had a stroke, heart attack, or a heart problem. Your doctor should carefully check whether your heart can take the additional strain of having sex. If you've got low blood pressure, known as hypotension, or you've got rare inherited eye disease, such as retinitis pigmentosa, or you've got sickle cell anemia, which is an abnormality of the red blood cells, leukemia, which is cancer of the blood cells, or multiple myeloma, which is cancer of the bone marrow, if you've got a deformity of your penis or Peyronie's disease, which is a curved penis, if you have a stomach ulcer, and if you've got a bleeding problem like haemophilia. These are all reasons why you, why you may not be able to take sildenafil, and in this case, you should be discussing it with your doctor. Now, just to be clear, this is not a full list of possible contraindications. However, please do discuss this with your doctor or pharmacist before taking it if you have any of these aforementioned problems. So how and where do you get sildenafil? So if you live in the UK, you can get sildenafil on the NHS if you have erectile dysfunction. Branded versions of sildenafil, such as Viagra, are not available on the NHS except in special circumstances. Alternatively, you can also get sildenafil on a private prescription from your doctor. However, this does mean that you'll need to pay the full cost of the medication. In the UK, you can also buy sildenafil from a pharmacy after discussion with the pharmacist. If you buy sildenafil for erectile dysfunction, it can also be known by the brand names Viagra, Aronix, Liberese and Nipatra. If you choose this option, the pharmacist is going to ask you some questions about your general health to make sure that sildenafil is safe for you to take. You can also talk to your pharmacist about possible side effects. If the pharmacist has any concerns about whether sildenafil is safe for you, they may advise you to see your doctor. Finally, you can buy sildenafil over the internet. However, it's really important that you're careful if you do this because there's a lot of websites selling fake medications. Medicines online are not always regulated and the ingredients in them can vary from one pack to another. They can cause unpleasant side effects or they may not be suitable for you. If you do end up choosing this option, it's best to see your doctor first because they know your medical history and they can discuss whether you might benefit from treatment. And finally, if you do choose to buy sildenafil over the internet, make sure that you follow a couple of key points. Make sure that any online pharmacy, especially in the UK, is registered with the General Pharmaceutical Council, that any online doctor service is registered with the Care Quality Commission, and that all doctors are registered with the General Medical Council. This will help ensure some level of safety when purchasing medicines online, but it's no guarantee. 
So how and when do you take sildenafil? So sildenafil comes as tablets. They range from 25 to 100 milligrams, which you should swallow whole with a drink of water or juice, but don't use grapefruit juice. For erectile dysfunction, it's best to take sildenafil on an empty stomach. It may take longer to work if you actually take it with food. Now, the usual dose for erectile dysfunction is 50 milligrams when you need it, and it's important not to take it more than once a day. The dose can be increased to 100 milligrams or decreased to 25 milligrams depending on its effect. And again, the exact dosage is going to vary from person to person. You can take sildenafil up to four hours before you want to have sex. And for sildenafil to work properly, then you need to be sexually excited or aroused. If sildenafil doesn't work for you, it may be because of a couple of reasons. Number one, you haven't waited long enough after taking it before trying to have sex. You may also have waited too long after taking it to have sex the dose may not be high enough, or you're not sexually aroused. Taking too much sildenafil can cause some unpleasant side effects, and you should talk to your doctor if you take too much sildenafil and you're worried about anything like headaches, dizziness, indigestion, a blocked nose, or changes to your vision. So this brings us on nicely now to talking about more general side effects. So like all medications, sildenafil can cause side effects, although not everybody gets them. So we'll start off by talking briefly about common side effects. So common side effects are side effects that happen in more than one in a hundred people. If you're taking sildenafil for erection problems, you're unlikely to get side effects as you're only taking it for a short time. However, if you do develop them, they can include things such as headaches, feeling sick, flushing, including hot flushes, indigestion, the stuffy nose, or feeling dizzy. Serious side effects, on the other hand, are rare, and they happen in less than one in a thousand people. However, it's important to be aware of them. You should stop taking sildenafil and contact your doctor or the emergency services straight away if you've got a sudden decrease or loss of vision, chest pain, or a prolonged or painful erection which lasts for more than two hours. These aren't all the side effects of sildenafil, and for a full list, you should look at the information leaflet inside the medicine packet and familiarize yourself with the potential side effects. It's important to be informed when taking any medication. It's also important to be cautious when taking certain other medicines because some medicines don't mix well with sildenafil. You should tell your doctor if you're taking things such as nitrates for chest pain or angina. So, just to cover another point, which is that sildenafil is only one option for erectile dysfunction. There are various other options, including things like a vacuum pump, psychological treatments, penile implants, and pelvic floor muscle exercises. It's also important to ensure that you're practicing a healthy lifestyle, so things such as stopping smoking and cutting down on alcohol consumption, because these can all affect erectile dysfunction. Other lifestyle changes that can help with erectile dysfunction are things such as maintaining a healthy weight, stopping taking drugs if you do take these, so recreational drugs like cocaine, as well as exercising and helping to try to do things to reduce your stress. These are all going to help holistically improve issues to do with erectile dysfunction. So let's finish off the video with some really quick key facts about sildenafil that hopefully you'll remember and take away. So it usually takes 30 to 60 minutes for sildenafil to work for an erectile dysfunction. You can take it up to four hours before you want to have sex. Remember that taking sildenafil alone will not cause an erection. You need to be sexually aroused for it to work. The most common side effects are headaches, feeling sick, indigestion, and dizziness. Many people have no side effects or only mild ones. It can be dangerous to take sildenafil if you also take medicines called nitrates, which are often given for chest pain. And this is because the combination can cause a dangerous drop in your blood pressure. If you're not sure if you're taking a nitrate, ask your doctor or your pharmacist. And remember, if you develop any sudden, severe double vision, loss of vision, any chest pain, or a painful erection that lasts for longer than two hours, please call emergency services straight away. I hope you found the video useful and informative. I've published another video which you might find useful on erectile dysfunction, which I've already mentioned, and you can see that on screen here. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section. However, I can't give specific advice on medication dosing or when to take your medicine. This is because this is a medical education channel and not a clinical advice platform. Any concerns or questions clinically, you should speak to your own doctor or healthcare provider. Please do remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you learned something new, and until next time, thanks for watching and bye.